Always great to have Adam Schefter hanging out with the show. We talk about Orthopedic Associates of Wisconsin. There is a difference. You guys can go to Brookfield or Pewaukee or McGuanago for their faster, easier, and less expensive alternative to the ER or urgent care. Guys, all the physicians are fellowship trained in specialty orthopedics. They are board certified or board eligible. They have advanced training in their respective fields. The Spine Center provides the highest level of spinal care from a team of board certified physicians, fellowship trained surgeons, and non-surgical specialists. They also offer offer on-site physical therapy, MRIs, outpatient surgical procedures, orthopedic ASAP clinic, there is a difference. Now I can't tell if I'm hearing a busy signal in the tune that we have or a busy signal on the air. Is that in the music? Yeah, it's yeah. in the music. Sounds like a busy signal. Dude, dude, yeah. dude. They kind of mixed it because, you know, Schefter's calling people and, oh, you know, so it's kind of brilliant tied together there. <laughs> Do we have Adam Schefter? I'm watching him on the stream. He's flipping the phone. It's spinning around. It looks like one of those signs we talked about that I should have to hold outside of uh, the Al McGuire Center for the bet that I lost with Ben Bruss. Do we have a date that you're doing that I for? asked Benny where his uniform is. He said it's here at the Avenue so that I can, anytime, like I could okay. do it today if we wanted to. We could run over there after the show and get that taken uh, care of. I'd pick a rainy day, Jen. Why? I'm the one that has to stand outside. I know, but rainy day means less foot traffic. <laughs> I mean, right? it's going to exist on social anyway, so plenty of people are still going to see it. Yeah. That's the fear? Well, that's the reality. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, let's get to Adam Schefter. I can't see him on the stream, but but I trust that he is there. Good morning, Adam. How are you doing today? Good morning, Jen, Gabe, and Chewy. How are you doing? We tried to call in. It was... A difficult connection, so we're doing it on the phone instead. All right, no problem. Let me ask you this out of, right out of the gates. We all watched the Packers game against the Chiefs this weekend. We all know what happened in the final minute of that game. Does the NFL have an officiating problem? Oh, the NFL has had an officiating problem. It's not like it's new. It's that you see it happen this past weekend in a primetime setting in the way that it did, and so now people are saying, oh, <laughs> There's an official problem that I could tell you uh, most coaches, front offices, players, uh, they would say this has been there for years. And I've had people talk to me about it this week, you know, call me up unsolicited. And, you know, the analogy they've used is they've said basically coaches are in that building 70, 80, 90 hours a week, every week, getting ready for Sunday. Players in that building 50, 60 hours a week getting ready for Sunday. Officials are doing their day jobs before they fly into the game, and the league thinks that they spend about 10 hours a week, maybe, although this person said to me, it's maybe two getting ready for the game. Another analogy that another person used was like this. They said to me, what's your golf handicap? I said, you don't want to know. It's terrible, like a 22, 23, 24. They said, okay, if you worked on your game 40 hours a week, every week, do you think that you would be able to lower, lower that 22 to, let's just say, I don't know, a 17, an 18? Probably. If I put a lot of time in. Right. Do you think that you can improve it if you don't play? No. So why is it that officials, how do we expect them to be better when they're not doing anything during the week? And there's been this argument that there should be full-time officials. By the way, the NBA has full-time officials. The NB and NHL has full-time officials, full-time major league umpires, but yet the most popular, most lucrative, most successful sport doesn't have full-time officials. They're paid like full-time officials. They're paid that way, but they're not doing full-time work. Well, let me just follow up on that, Adam, from a logistics standpoint, because you don't have games during the week, right? We got Thursday, we got Sunday, yeah. we got Monday. Would this be like a VR type of thing? Would they be like virtual reality to get more reps, right? There's only so many games to go around. The comp to the NBA and the NHL is you got games every night of the week that they are honing their craft and getting the reps. I, I think there's a lot of ways it could be done. Okay, one that somebody talked to me about, there's like there should be a central ground, training ground during the week, during football season. Officials should be gathered in uh, Chicago, Dallas, Indianapolis, Kansas City. You pick the city. And the way that I was talking about it with somebody this week was they go in there, they 
all review all the calls from all the games together. They study technique. They study calls. There's a physical conditioning element to the whole thing. They're going over all the rules all the time, working on it. See, look what they did in the Packers Chiefs game. Look what they did in the, the Bears game. Look what they did in the Lions game. And they're studying it together so that they could all be more consistent. It's never going to be perfect. We get it. It's an imperfect system. It's flawed. But the but fact that- of the matter is, the fact of the matter is, the league, which is so progressive in so many ways, progressive about making money and driving ratings and boosting popularity, does an unbelievable job of it. In this area, it's lagging. It's just lagging. Adam, do you think it's an age thing? Because I always use the driving analogy. You know, I'm 54 years old. I am not as good a driver at 54 as opposed to 35. It's just your reaction time, your process, your uh, peripheral vision isn't as good. And if you look at, at a lot of these officials, I mean, they're in their 50s, 60s, and maybe 70s. Do they have to, you think, go younger? Because so many of these plays are like bang, bang, bang. I, well, well, you know, you know, true. Let, let me say this. First of all, I thought you were an excellent driver at thirty-five, and I think you're an excellent <laughs> driver today at fifty-four. Okay, <laughs> so let me start there. But beyond that, uh, I think that they have to look at a variety of ways. You know, uh, uh, again, and I guess spoken to a few people about it this week. One person was saying to me, um, and maybe uh, you can come in here, Chewy. They're, they're like, you know what? There's a lot of uh, players who, when they get done with their career, they're looking for something to do. How about, you know, a training ground for them to become officials? Like, th- they would understand it. What about that? I'm like, oh, that's interesting. I kind of like that idea. I kind of um, like my day over at 10 o'clock, though, Adam. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, well, well you, you, you're good. You know, you're good. And, we, and, and, and to your point, we don't want you on the roads any, any later yeah. than 1030 a.m. <laughs> we want to get you off the roads by then. But, um, the, yeah, there's probably something to that, but there's also something to the experience of this. Look, I'm just telling you, these, these officials do, a, in many cases, do a great job. And these, these are, as you said, bang-bang plays, and you see them make an on-field call, and they're right way more often than they're wrong, but the wrong ones stand out yeah. when everybody's watching. And so there has to be a way that we can at least, or the league, can try to improve that and do something to... Make it better. And, again, that was the word that I heard over and over, consistent. Their teams just want them to be consistent. And their point was these guys, they're paid like they're full-time, but they're not doing it on a full-time basis. And they believe that impacts the results on Sunday, whether you agree or disagree. And I think anybody who saw the last drive on Sunday night, and I'm sure people in Green Bay aren't complaining too much, but – it was obvious that they, they, they missed any number of calls in that drive, and, and they were inconsistent, inconsistent. Has the league thought about being more transparent about some of the process as well? Because I mean, we all get the pool report, which is, you know, again, it seems like it's a waste of everyone's time because the officials haven't looked at any film, and yeah. they just kind of, yeah. well, clearly that's what you thought because you called the penalty or didn't think because you didn't call the penalty. But at times also, Adam, there's, oh, they do the expedited, expedited review, and everybody knows you did the expedited review, but the officials just come out and say, oh, after further discussion. Like, the, the hit on Mahomes... Like it was very clear he was in bounds. Like I feel like that would be very easily somebody in a booth going, "Hey, actually, he was in bounds. That should be an okay hit." And and you're able to do it quickly and move on. Have they thought about being more transparent about this whole process? Because I think that's part of the issue as well. But when you say Gabe, you want them to be more transparent. What what do you want them to do? You want them on Monday to say we blew the call? We 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 don't need them to say that. We know they did. No, I, I they, want. They got that I guess wrong. I'm. I'm talking about more transparent about when they blow calls. I mean, because we find out when players get fined. Shouldn't we find out when we, officials are fined? Listen, listen. We, 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 we don't know when officials are downgraded. Okay? Yes. I, I, I would be quite confident in saying uh, that the crew on Sunday night was downgraded. I'd be quite confident in saying that. Do I know that? No. Okay. But then they're downgraded, and what does that mean? It means that it's held against them for future playoff assignments and potentially the Super Bowl. Um, and so, you know, we, we go from there. Um, it's a case where, you know, transparency, I don't know that that does all that much. It's not like 
these officials need to be publicly reprimanded. We, we know they did a terrible job on the final drive on Sunday night. We know it. And it's going to be held against them, I'm sure, at some point in time. So, you know, people get all worked up about the fishing. I get it. Um, but to me, the league just, it's talked about so much. You know, the funny thing is, if you asked all the head coaches and GMs and personnel men and players their honest assessment of fit, they'd be blasted. But they can't do They can't say that. They can't say that because they'd be fined. But the truth of the matter is, I can't tell you how many people complain about it. It, it, you know, nobody, nobody is happy with the state of the officiating in the NFL, in my mind. Well, I just pulled up an article from Front Office Sports from earlier this year that projected 73.5 million Americans will bet at some point on the 2023 NFL season. That's why mm-hmm. people care, yeah. right? Because mm-hmm. you can't have these dramatic money swings based on bad calls. But Mike Freeman wrote a column, Adam, that I thought was really interesting that said that you want to figure out who to blame for this, and you could blame the NFL or you could blame the officials for not maybe putting in more time. Blame the fans. Blame the fans for tolerating what has become an inferior product, or at least not as good as it could be, because we're addicted to it. And he says that if this happened with your phone, if your phone kept malfunctioning, or if your car kept stopping on the highway, you'd trade it in for something else. But because the NFL has a monopoly, there's nothing else to trade it in for. So it's an interesting, like, he, he was saying, like, we need to hold the NFL accountable by not watching while also admitting that there's an addiction to the NFL that people aren't capable of walking away from. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, uh, th- this has been a long-standing issue. The light got shined on it again Sunday night, especially in your market. And it's not going away. I mean, it, it's going to be here again. And when officials blow calls, it comes up. And, again, I want to be very clear. Like, uh, these officials, they're great people. And they do, they do, I think they do a really good job, by and large. But mm-hmm. there are obvious misses, clear misses. And I think everybody is just looking for the officiating to be as good as it can be. And for the league's officials to be as consistent as possible. Well, is it as simple, Adam, as putting more replay in then? Is it as simple as we were talking about the play the other day? Go ahead. Jen, if it were that that simple, the competition committee would have done that a while ago. And, you know, they always talk about the unintended consequences. They're trying to keep these games moving 100%. I get that. Last Thursday night, you know, you could see Al Michaels was saying how Cleet Blakeman, they might as well let him do the play-by-play of the game here. Like, nobody wants that. So we don't want to stop everything and just be like, okay, you know, we're viewing these. I don't know, maybe in the final two That's minutes. what I was just going to say, yes. Because that play maybe that we were talking about, everybody talks about, the unnecess- uh, everybody talks about the PI that wasn't called. Yep. Um, but what about the yep. unnecessary roughness call on the sideline where Patrick Mahomes was clearly establishing yep. himself as a runner well, and <laughs> Jonathan Owen gets flagged for making a football hit? You know, you should be able to replay that in the final, it was in the final minute of the game, mm-hmm. I believe, and say Patrick Mahomes was still in bounds when Jonathan Owens delivered that hit. Yeah, I, I agree with all this. You know, I agree with all this. Um, again, we're, we're, I think people just want the league to be a little bit more consistent. That's all. That's all people are asking. You know what I think is going to push it along, Adam, is when baseball goes to electronic balls and strikes. How will that? How will it push it along? I just I think that'll run so smooth, and they'll be like, okay, they figured baseball out. You know, the traditionalists will be like, okay, I hate it, but it's better for the game. And I think you're going to see, um, like Jonathan Owens hit on the sideline, someone in the box going, no, nope, he was in bounds, getting the referee's ear. No, that's good. And then and then I don't care if you know. I don't think people care. Um, like Gabe was saying, the transparency of it, all they want to know is what they see is the right call no matter where it comes from. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with that. And again, here's the thing. There are ways that they can figure out uh, ways to improve the product. Mm-hmm. And again, that, that, that's all we're trying to do, whether that's reviewing the final two minutes, whether that's an electronic system, whether that's – I, I don't know what it is, whether it's full-time officials, whether it's getting these guys to work more at their craft. Um, everybody just wants to see the game officiated as well as it can be, knowing that there's going to be mistakes because that's just how it goes. There's human error. 
That's a part of this. But when you see those calls like that the other night, it's just, you know, it's unfortunate that a game could be and should be and will be decided like that on Sunday night. Though, I will say, it was excellent for the Green Bay Packers' playoff chances. Well, you mentioned their playoff chances, and you've been somebody that, despite their poor start, seemed to still believe in this team. They entered a four-game stretch. We talked to you after the Rams game, Adam, when yep. they, the Packers were sitting there at 3-6. Three, three and six, and or excuse me, three and five at that point. You know, entering a, a gauntlet against the Steelers, Chargers, Lions, Chiefs. You're like, okay, if they figure out a way to go two and two, and you know, I don't know. We probably made fun of you a little bit because it didn't seem like they go two mm-hmm. and two. And what do you know? Here they, they're now six and six, one of the hottest teams in the league after wins over the Lions and Chiefs. What was it about this team that made you think that they could go on a little bit of a run? Well, I, I will say this: I always thought the quarterback was good, and. Um, he started out looking good, and then he looked terrible. And then I was wondering, well, what's going on here? We, like we all were. And then he's played great. And so I think it shows you that if he's playing at the level that he's capable of, that they, they're going to be a playoff team. If he's not, they're not. And I just thought that they had some good young talent at the skill positions. I thought, you know, I, I also thought I will say that they'd be able to run the football that Aaron Jones would be carrying the day. And that, that hasn't happened, and they're still winning the last two weeks. So credit to them for even overcoming that. But I think that also speaks to the way that Jordan Love has played recently. Um, and again, you know, I had him on my fancy team at one point. I just say that as a matter of point because it's interesting in that there was a game this year, the Monday night game in Vegas, where I needed – I think nine points from him to win that week, and he had like six, and he was awful. And I watched the game, and I couldn't take it anymore. Okay, like it was maddening. And anybody who plays fancy football and they need a certain amount of points, they they know what that's like. And I'm like, what is going on? Like the guy couldn't make a single play, and now he's making them all the time. And lo and behold, they're winning. And now you look at the schedule at the Giants Monday night. For Tampa, at Carolina, at Minnesota, home for Chicago, five games left. Like, at the worst, they should go three and two. Maybe they go four and one. Right? Yeah. Am, am I missing something? No, here? no, you're 100% right. Two, two and three would be a disappointment. Mm-hmm. Two and three would be a disappointment. And they got a chance to make the playoffs. And it's fun and it's exciting to see. And the young team is starting to grow up. And that was their concern that it would be a young team, that they'd make mistakes. And they did do that. And I don't know whether there's more hair in their chest now or what the hell is going on, but they're playing better and they're winning games and they're in the playoff hunt. That reminds me, i got to book a waxing appointment, guys, so we just <laughs> jot that down. <laughs> Adam, before we let you go, the Jen, 2023... I hope there's not hair in your chest. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. The 2023 word of the year is Riz. Oxford University, the Oxford English Dictionary, has declared yeah. Riz as the 2020... Now, you have a teenage daughter, so I assume you're familiar with the term Riz, but I want to know on a scale of 1 to 10, Riziness. How much Riz does Adam Schefter have? Not much at all, but I I happen to only know that term. I don't know where I learned it recently. I, I don't think I learned it. I don't believe I learned it from my 15-year-old daughter, uh, who's got way more riz than her old man. But um, I, I, I think I read it maybe as it pertained to, like, Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey or the way that the 49ers – uh, strut out onto the field with the boom box. You know, they got Riz. Charisma. Charisma. That's Riz, right? There yeah. we go. Nailed it. <laughs> well, that was definitely worth it. <laughs> Adam, we appreciate you hanging out with us. Have a great week. We'll talk to you again soon. Good luck with the waxing, Jen. <laughs>